Hello friends! Hey, I have this really cool technique that I wanted to show you today. It is with plain old masking tape and I wanted to show you how you could paint it, stencil it, and stamp it to make a really cool background. So here's some of the um, tape that I have done. You can see it's cool kind of prints that are on there. I've used these pieces for that card and here's another little piece of it. And so it's a really cool technique just using masking tape. So let's get started. I have my mat ready and I would recommend using some kind of a splat mat for this technique. I'm gonna just set my card there. I've put some masking tape onto my mat already. So I've got a wide uh, one and a half inch here and then I've got a couple smaller ones, a one inch and a one and a quarter, or maybe this is three quarter. Uh, and so I'm going to just put a couple more strips on there. So I didn't make them too long because I'm going to use them on cards. I am going to do uh, this with a layout. And so I'll probably make some longer strips for that. But for this demo, I'm doing a card. And so I'm making my pieces a little shorter. Now I'm making enough tape to basically uh, do like two or three cards at least because here on my original, I've only got two pieces of the masking tape that are there. I'm gonna show you how. Okay, so what I've done is I put some paints out and I'm just using acrylic paints, Liquitex, Artist Loft, um, Basics, and a little bit of um, some Dina Wakely as well. Okay, so I've also got a cup of water close by and I'm gonna start just with a, um, a one inch flat brush and I'm gonna just set that aside. And I'm gonna start by just adding a little bit of water. I just take the side of the brush and rub it against my cup, just dipping a little bit into the water. Then I'm gonna pick up some of the white and I'm gonna put white on here, just coming across. And I'm gonna dip a little bit more water because it's just gonna help me to flow a little bit more. I'm gonna pick up some of the gold. Now, I didn't even swipe my brush, I didn't clean it. I'm just picking up a little bit of the gold, a little bit of the white, kind of blending it, mixing it together, just getting kind of a nice even base. Not perfect that it's all gold or all white, but just a little mix of the two. Okay, now I'm gonna swish out my brush and I'm gonna heat dry that. Oops. Because my paint layer is thin on here, it dries really quick. Okay, now I'm gonna pull out some different stencils and I'm gonna start with this one here. And I'm gonna just put the stencil right on top and I'm going to pick a lighter color and start with a lighter color and come on top with it. Now I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of the paint. I don't want a lot of paint on here because it's just gonna get gloopy on my stencil. So I'm almost like dry brushing it on and just getting a little bit of that paint on there. And again, I'm, I'm not covering the whole area, I'm just doing some, okay? So there, you can see that nice color. I'll dry that, swish out my brush at the same time. So now I'm going to go to a bit darker color. Again, I'm just going to place it on, the stencil on. Now when I'm stenciling, I'm very careful that I never um, use the edge of a stencil so that you get that line that's there. I don't want a stencil line because to me it just looks very fake. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of a darker color and this time I'm using a turquoise. My bricks are going horizontal. So I'm gonna just use my brush, and again, I'm very lightly dusting on my color with just a little bit of water on my brush. 
This way it doesn't get too gloopy and too thick on my stencil, okay? So lift that up. Hey, that's looking fantastic. And let's dry that. Because we're keeping the paint thin, it's drying really quickly, okay? So now I'm gonna come over with this stencil and I'm gonna kinda go on both sides with it. Give my brush just a little bit of a clean out there. And I'm gonna pick up a gray and very lightly again, just coming over top with this gray. And it's quite light, so I'm gonna take, I wondered, and I'm gonna just take a little bit of black and I'm just gonna put a little black beside my gray. And then what I can do is I can pick up some gray, pick up some black, and then I'm gonna just dust that across there, okay? So I don't want too much water, so I don't wanna keep reloading water, but I am gonna go over top of some of the other areas where I've already stenciled, so that I've kinda of got this crisscross kind of mix match thing going on. Let's lift that up and see how that looks. Ooh, loving it, okay. So now what I would do is I would go and wash my stencils because I like keeping them um, in really good shape. So I would go and wash them. I'm not going to do that right now, but I, that's what I would do. And if you wash your stencils with nice warm water and soap, all that paint will come off right away. I also keep a toothbrush right beside my laundry sink where I do all my washing of my stencils and stamps. And the toothbrush helps just to, um, to rub off, kind of scrape off some of that paint off the stencil and just keep the stencils in really nice shape. Okay, so I want to make sure this is good and dry because I'm going to go to stamping next. All right. So now I've got a bunch of mixed media stamps, uh, Tim Holtz stamps mostly. Uh, this one here is... Um, it is, oh, I think it's called Deep Blue is the stamp name of this one. And then the rest of them are Tim Holtz. And I've got some archival uh, ink. You just want some kind of black ink that is um, permanent, a permanent waterproof ink, okay? So I'm just loading up right onto my stamp and then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna lay it right on top and press that down with my hands. Now you can use a block if you want, but I actually find just doing it like that works really well. Okay, so now I'm gonna um, load up this stamp and you'll see on the samples that I've I've made up for today that, whoops, yeah, uh, I've used the same stamps just because I had them and they were dirty and I thought, why dirty more stamps? I'll just keep using the same ones. They're really great. So I got this one, I'm gonna just put down here and a little bit more of it up here kind of sideways going across the tape okay and I think it just needs a little bit right there of those dots I really love those dots okay so there you go that is the technique that is how easy it is to make your own background with some paint masking tape and stencils okay now I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to show you how to peel off um I've got another set that's completely dried and I'll show you how we're going to use this now in our cards now I have lots of paint here so I'm going to peel this off um, after the video and I'm going to make some more tape because I don't want to waste all of that paint. Okay, so I'll set this aside. Throw it on the floor. There we go. Okay, now I've got this one. Okay, now you can see this one is completely dry. And so I've got my masking tape here and you can see where I'm just pulling it up. And now I've got this really cool um, background, right? It's almost like my very own washi tape. Very similar idea if you want to make your own washi tape. You can do that with double-sided tape um, or masking tape. So you can see, look at these fun pieces. Oh, I love that one. And that one. Wowzers. And there's my last one. Okay. 
So if I wanted to store these, um, I would probably put them on a piece of tin foil or a piece of saran wrap or parchment paper so that the, the sticky um, stays sticky on the back of them. Okay, so now what I've got is back to my card. I use two pieces here as my background piece, okay? So I use these really bright colored ones that I had made up. And so now I'm gonna use these ones just to show you the card done with some different colors. So here's my base and I am loving this piece here. So this one is gonna go right here on the card. And so I'm gonna center that because I want some of those dots up there and I want some of that down there. And then I'm gonna use um, this piece. So this is gonna be a little narrower, but I like how the prints are so different between these two, hey? That looks really cool. And so I'm gonna just smooth that down. Now, if you're concerned about it sticking, so say your masking tape isn't as sticky as mine, I'm gonna peel off the bottom there, just rip that with my finger. Uh, you can use some distress collage medium or an adhesive of some sort if you are concerned that that's not gonna stay stuck. Okay, so I am loving it. Now, what I've done, sorry, I have masking tape, there we go. Now, what I've done, is I've pre-cut some trim that I'm gonna glue in underneath here on this side. So I'm gonna just peel up that masking tape with my finger, okay? And then I'm gonna use a hot glue gun, run some hot glue down here. My hot glue gun is being a little finicky. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna lay this trim down over top of my hot glue. Okay, and then I'm gonna push that masking tape back onto my little pom-pom trim. Ha, <laughs> love this. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna lift it and put my trim under there as well. And tape goes back down. This pom-pom stuff is really wild. I picked it up at Christmas time and I think it's very fun. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just trim off the bottom. There, I'm gonna lose that pom-pom, unfortunately. Bye, pom-pom. All right, I just love it. It looks so great. Okay, now for this card, I wanted to do it a little different. So I have die cut this instead of this. So I had used this in my original. I'll just keep that up there so you can see it. And so I'd use this one. It's lovely. I just die cut it in white cardstock. Then I used a little bit of Walnut Stain Distress Oxide Ink. I twist it onto my splat mat, spray a little water into it, and then just dip the die cut through it, and it gives just a little bit of a, a muted look to it. Now, instead of using the Umbrella Mary Poppins Girl from this Tim Holtz die set, I'm going to use the Chimney Sweep instead. Oh, actually, and I'm gonna use the little fan is gonna be blowing this little fan, okay? So I'm gonna have this tucked in here, but my pom-poms are kind of in the way. So I'm gonna to have to, I'm gonna to have to move those. I'm gonna to have to just trim off this guy right here. It's just a little too chunky right there. And then I will use my Distress Collage Medium, one of my favorite products, makes everything stick. And I'll put some in underneath here and put my die cut on top of it. And some in under here. And again, press my die cut into it. So what I like to do is just kind of hold it with my fingers for a few seconds and then it sticks really well. Now on the back of my man, I'm going to use some foam squares and pop those on to the back of him. This is such an easy and quick little card to make. 
And by using up that masking tape, you could just make like a dozen of these in like an hour. Like it would just go by so fast because they're really easy with this fun, funky tape stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna drop him down here and glue him on. And then because my little um, little fan is so tiny, I'm gonna use just a little bit of my Distress Collage Medium and put that there so that it looks like he's blowing that in his hand. Isn't that fantastic? I love it, I love it. Okay, so now, um, oh, that pom-pom. You know, I almost think it could go back there, although it might look like it's coming out of his bum, like it's a tail or something, and so I don't really like that, no. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I've got this great um, word pack from uh, Tim Holtz. I've had this for years, years, and I still haven't used it all. And so I've got a really cool saying here and I'm going to take and I'm going to cut it apart so that it's in smaller chunks. So no beauty shines and I'm going to take a little bit of the collage medium, the distress collage medium and stick that on. No beauty shines and I'm going to have it coming in right here so that it doesn't look funny that I don't have um, that one pom-pom sitting there. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more to the back and put that one on there. Now let's move this guy down a little bit. No beauty shines brighter than that of a good heart. Okay, now one thing I didn't show you what I did was this guy here and how I got this um, black embossing on him. So I'm gonna show you how to do that with this girl and then I'll just finish up the card for you. So what I do is I take my die cut and I use some Versamark watermark ink and I stamp right onto her. I like to use a paper towel or a scrap piece of paper just so that the ink doesn't get everywhere. Okay, and then I'm going to use aged black embossing enamel, one of my favorites. And I've just got a piece of paper that's going to be my tray. So I'm gonna take and sprinkle that embossing powder right on top of her. And pick her up with my tweezers. Tap it off. Now it's a chunky embossing powder. So it doesn't stick all the time. You have to really watch it. So now I'm gonna use my heat gun and you can see how it scatters, okay? So you wanna get that heat gun in there as fast as you can so that the Versamark does not have an opportunity to dry. And you can see how it just peels off. So I like to use a paper towel or something under it so that when it scatters everywhere, it doesn't go all over my table. Then I'm going to pick that up and let that dry. And isn't that just a fantastic looking girl? Okay, so get rid of some of that. All right, so that girl is that same girl there. All right, so now what I also like to do with this um, em embossing enamel is I like to take a little bit of my collage medium, pick it up, I dip it right into my cup, and then I take it and I swipe it onto my card. Now, if you planned ahead, you could put your embossing powder on and then you could heat it from underneath. But I never know exactly where I want it to go. So sometimes I do do that and I still love doing it that way. It's a great technique. But this is also a great way. If you're like, I, I want to put the powder, the embossing enamel on after, this is a great way to do that. You can just use that distress collage medium and as long as you are going to heat set this right away while it's all still wet it's going to work out really really cool okay so let me just show you here so i've got that collage medium with my enamel on there it's looking fantastic set this aside so i don't make a mess and you can see how it bubbles right up lift it up there you can see how it bubbles and it kind of has a little bit of a crackle, but it is a uh, heat setting so that the embossing enamel is melting and activated. And it's also at the same time drying the distressed collage medium.
But by doing it this way, it doesn't scatter everywhere. Oh, I'm going to have to glue that guy back on. I melted him right off. So I'll just stick that back on with some collage medium. Get a bunch of it there. And stick him back on right there. Okay, so there you go. You can see this fantastic card made with masking tape as part of the background. Isn't that awesome? I hope you'll give that a try. And please subscribe to my channel and my other videos. Have a great day.